Welcome to Coma Park to the semifinal round of the Dramatic Arts seventh grade competition. We're going to start first with the serious categories. Um, we're going to then go on to the humorous category and then end with the original category. Uh, these people put a lot of work and time into their presentation. Hopefully, uh, they'll be doing a great job and we hope you enjoy it. So, without further ado, we will start with the serious category. I'm Oriel Frumkin. My poem is called, If Poets Ruled the World. If poets ruled the world, laws would be written with panache and, oh yes, compassion, civil liberty and fashion. Carpetbaggers, fold up your tents and cash in. Poets, like mothers, would never send their brothers to war. Poets don't have voices that sound like guns. Words can bite, incite. But history is made by men who fight, not for wrong or right, but might. If poets ruled the world, every city block would have a park for birds and dogs alike, a path for bikes and soft ice cream. Trees would be everywhere, cars even fewer. The whole system just flushed down the sewer. If only poets were the rulers. If world by poets was ruled, hunger would feed upon the deeds of honest men, perhaps not zen, but a blend of now and then, form and function. Tear down the walls of corruption in government. Make way for equanimity, grace of femininity. So let it be known and forever shown that poets should rule the world. Thank you. My name is Rose Kepka, and the title of my poem is Let America Be America Again by Langston Hughes. <sighs> Let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plain, seeking a land where he himself is free. America never was America to me. Let America be the dream the dreamers dreamed. Let it be that great, strong land of love where never kings connive nor tyrants scheme, and any man may be crushed by one above. It never was America to me. Oh, let my land be a land where liberty is crowded by no false patriotic wrath, but opportunity is real and life is free. Equality is in the air we breathe. There's never been equality for me, nor freedom in this homeland of the free. The free? Who said the free? Not me. Surely not me. For the millions on relief today? For the millions shot down when we strike? For the millions who have nothing for our pay? For all the dreams we've dreamt, and all the songs we've sung, and all the hopes we've held, and all the flags we've hung? The millions who have nothing for our pay? Except a dream that's almost dead today. Oh, let America be America again. The land that never has been yet and yet must be. A land where every man is free. Who made America? Whose sweat and blood? Whose faith and pain? Whose hand at the foundry? Whose plow in the rain? Must bring back our mighty dream again. Sure. Call me any ugly name you choose, for the steel of freedom does not stain from those who live like leeches on people's lives. Oh yes, I say it plain. America never was America to me, and yet I swear this oath. America will be. Out of the rack and ruin of our gangster death, out of the rape and rot of the graft and stealth and lies, we the people must redeem the land, the mines, the plants, the rivers, the mountains, the forests, and the endless plain. All the stretch of these great green states and make America again. Thank you. Hi, my name is Amal Mansour and I will be performing the poem, Unity is Community by Kaylee Brum. In our communities, it's all about seeking positive opportunities. 
opportunities, which could be a solution. A solution to our revolution. Revolution. A drastic change in the way we think and behave. We can behave where we can engrave, engrave in our world's history to make a switch, a switch to enrich, to enrich the minds of our young ones, to show it about going for your goal and hitting a home run, and that life doesn't have to be living by a gun, but to make a change we have to look within our hearts. And in our hearts, fill in the missing parts. And once that happens, helping ourselves and others can start. But like I said, it's all about positive opportunity and bringing the community together in unity. Because without unity, there's no such thing as a community. Thank you. I'm Viveka, and my poem is called Human Family by Maya Angelou. I note the obvious differences in the human family. Some of us are serious, and some thrive on comedy. Some declare their life is lived with profundity, and others claim they really live the real reality. The variety of our skin tones can confuse, bemuse, delight. Brown and pink and beige and purple, tan and blue and white. I've sailed upon the seven seas and stopped in every land. I've seen the wonders of the world, not yet one common man. I know 10,000 women called Jane and Mary Jane, but I've not seen any two who really were the same. Mirror twins are different, although their features jibe, and friends think quite different thoughts while sitting side by side. We love and lose in China. We weep on England's moors. We laugh and cry in Guinea and thrive on Spanish shores. We seek success in Finland, are born and die in Maine. In minor ways we differ, but in major we're the same. I note the obvious differences between each sort and type, but we are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. Thank you. Hi, my name is Justice Swan, and I will be performing the poem, Congress Was Elected, by Franklin Price. <clears throat> Congress was elected for the people of their state to follow selfish party lines, degrade this country's fate. Be seated there because you care. Listen to constituents. Respond only to who elected you, not inconsequential incidents. There is a representative, but not as one who stands alone not as a representative who may ascend unto the throne. Don't think you are George Washington, whom many wanted as the king. He refused. What makes you think you will bow and kiss your ring? The populace is waking up, no longer buying what you sell. Better start fighting for your people or they'll ring your ending bell. Thank you. Hi guys, my name is Bill Msege, and today I'll be performing Unity by Desha Smith. Unity, five letters that mean so much. It's something you can feel, but just can touch. It's a word that was meant to unite us, but oftentimes we let subtle differences divide us. Now, is that the world that we were brought up in? Or is it just the ignorance that we were caught up in? I know how the world is right now, not a pretty place. When girls don't need intelligence, just a pretty face to succeed. And girls overseas can't even learn to read or can't show their faces because it's seen as a disgrace. And women get smacked down and told to know their place. People are victims of hatred so unwarranted. Kids aren't being bullied anymore, they're being tormented. It's past teasing now, it's at torture. And either adults don't believe you or they try to escort you. And there's just so much bravery behind the computer monitor. And things are said that probably could have haunted you. But it's all fun and games, right? Sometimes anonymous, we aren't saying names, right? Let's try spreading love instead of spreading hate. Maybe then some of this violence could disintegrate. It's a shame kids get toe tags before they get to turn their tassel. All this violence, I'm wondering, 
if it's worth the hassle. Is it ever so serious enough to need a gun? My heart goes out to all those mothers losing sons. I cry for you and I pray for you. I hope the Lord will bring a better day for you. Can we all come together and agree? In this community, unity is something that we need. Thank you. My name is Danielle Znam and I'll be presenting the poem Alone by Maya Angelou. Lying, thinking, last night, how to find my soul a home where water is not thirsty and bread loaf is not stone. I came up with one thing and I don't believe I'm wrong, that nobody but nobody can make it out here alone. Alone, all alone. Nobody but nobody can make it out here alone. There are some millionaires with money they can't use. Their wives run around like banshees. Their children sing the blues. They've got expensive doctors to cure their hearts of stone. Cause nobody, but nobody can make it out here alone. Alone, all alone. Nobody, but nobody can make it out here alone. Now if you listen closely, I'll tell you what I know. Storm clouds are gathering and the wind is gonna blow. The race of man is suffering and I can hear the moan. Cause nobody, but nobody can make it out here alone. Alone, all alone. Nobody, but nobody can make it out here alone. Thank you. All right, that was amazing. Let's hear it for the serious category, everybody. That was excellent. Every single presenter was amazing. I really don't uh, envy the judges because that would be very hard to judge. They were all excellent. Next up, we're going to be having the humorous category. Um, so let's get into that. Hi, my name is Brute Kalameyu, and I'll be reciting a poem called Basketball is My Favorite Sport by Ken Evans. Basketball is my favorite sport. I dribble up and down the court. The ball goes bouncing off my toes and beans the teacher on the nose. He stumbles back and grabs his nose and hits the wall, and down he goes. The other players stop and stare. They've never heard the teacher swear. With no one playing anymore, I grab the ball, I shoot, <gasps> I score! I love this game. So much fun. <laughs> the teacher cried, but hey, we won. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kate Besa, and the poem that I'm reciting does not have a title, and the author is anonymous. Ladies and gentlemen, skinny and stout, I'll tell you a tale I know nothing about. The admission is free, so pay at the door, and I'll pull up a chair and sit on the floor. One bright day in the middle of the night, two dead boys got up to fight. Back to back, they faced each other, drew their swords, and shot each other. A blind man came to watch for a play. A mute man came to shout hooray. A deaf policeman heard the noise and came and killed those two dead boys. He lived in the corner in the middle of a block in a two-story house on a vacant lot. A man with no legs came walking by and kicked the lawman in his thigh. He crashed through the wall without making a sound onto a dry creek bed, but suddenly drowned. A long black hair came to cart him away, but he ran for his life and is still gone today. I watched from the corner of my big round table, the only eyewitness to facts is my fable. But if you ever doubt that my lies are true, just ask the blind man. He saw it too. Hi, my name is Maggie Crow, and I'll be performing a piece by Jerry Seinfeld in the humorous category. A lot of people think we have a weight problem in this country, and I don't agree with that. I don't think we have a weight problem until we're all physically touching each other all of the time. Until it is solid human flesh from coast to coast. A jar of olives just, someone's got to lose some weight, I can't move. A lot of reports, investigative reports on TV, weight problem in America, they all start the same way, don't they? A sidewalk shot, regular people, cutting, off, cutting them off at the head, don't want to see who they are. Aren't those people later just like, hey, that's my torso on CNN. That's not fair. I was just out trying to get some donut holes. The donut hole. The donut hole. What a horrible little snack. If you want a donut, have a donut. 
Why are you eating the donut whole? It's just a freaky metaphysical concept to begin with. A whole is the absence of whatever's surrounding it. If it was really a donut whole, the bag would be empty, and the donuts you got the holes from wouldn't have holes because you took them. Now you could take what they're calling the donut hole, which it is not, it is a donut plug, put it back in the donut hole. That eliminates the donut, the hole, and the plug, but you've still got a weight problem and people shooting you with a camera as you walk down the street. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sophia Holovan, and I'll be presenting Unify Yourselves. See that guy over there on the street? That lady holding the crying baby? The guy in the nice suit with a briefcase? What do all of these people have in common? They all want to belong to something. See that little kid in the tutu? That bus driver on break? All of these people have their own lives and their own worlds. We're all connected. My grandmother shouting at people on the bus, that coworker at McDonald's who told you suck, to suck it up and stop crying in the fries, all of these people are important, and that's what we need to realize. The girl who stole your pencil in the second grade, evil, but important. Your older sibling who will never be able to live up to, important. So, I guess the point of the speech thing is to remind you that everyone is important and a part of a community, and to remind you to unify yourselves. My name is Dasha Yuko, and I will be presenting the letters at school. One day, the letters went to school to try to learn each other. They got so mixed up, it was really hard to tell one from the other. A went first, and Z went last. The rest were all between them. JKL and M and then OP. I wish you could have seen them. BCD and JKL soon jostled well their betters. QRST, I grieve to say, were very naughty letters. Of course, they long they came towards. What else could be expected? Tilly made DJ Santi decidedly dejected. Now through it all, the consonants were rudest and uncouthest, while all the pretty vowel girls were certainly the smoothest. And simple you kept far from Q, with face to me and moral, because she said, we are we two, so apt to start a quarrel. But spiteful peace said poo for you, which made her feel quite bitter, and calling Noelle to help, he really tried to hit her. Cried A, now A and T, come here, if both will aid a minute. Good P will join in making peace, or else the mischief's in it. And smiling E, the ready sprite, said yes, and count me double. This done, sweet peace shone o'er the scene, and gone was all the trouble. Meanwhile, when you and P made up, the constants looked about him, and kissed the vowels, for you see, they could not do without him. Thank you. All right, let's hear it for the humorous category. They were excellent as well. We're going to have one more serious uh, in just one second. So let's hear from that person. Oh, he's original. Oh, I'm sorry, never mind. Okay, so, so now we're going to go through the original and these people have written their own things. So that's even doubly impressive. Um, so please watch with care and enjoy. Hi, my name is Noah Ballet, and I'm going to be presenting my original poem to State of the World. I hope you like it. One day while cooling off, watching some news, I saw two young brothers dressed up in the county blues. They were locked up for shooting someone dead in the street. Every time I see it, it's like it always repeats. Then a second later, I see people at war. I had no idea what they were fighting for. Something about one not paying their debt. Probably had to pay one dollar. I bet. Every time I see violence over little things, it makes me forget about the joy life brings. So if we could all unite and help one another, maybe we wouldn't be killing our brothers. So if we all used our heads more than a smidgen, maybe we wouldn't be running around like headless pigeons. So on another date, one Christmas Eve, I heard of a community wanting to achieve. I thought about this for more than a minute. I said, hey, this world, I want to be in it. 
the community wanted to give gifts and stuff, and nobody in the group was being handcuffed. So if we all came together and did good things, maybe we figure out the joy life brings. Memory. Wait, what's memory? I forgot. I had to make a poem? You kidding? About community? The school's community? Oh, oh. Where to start? Well, the community is unforgiving, harsh, and not understanding. Looking for discrimination. This may just be me, but hey, look, there's a small white boy. Let's jump him. Look, your shoelaces are untied. Let's jump him. Your head looks like a ping pong ball. Let's jump him. That, that's just a student community. This is a school community. One in one inch of snow, school's closed. Hail and half the roads are closed. It's a school day. Gambling has dice in it. Now they're number cubes. <sighs> Smarties are white and you can crush them into powder. Detention. Wait, it has to be longer? You kidding? Uh, I didn't sign up for this. Technically I did. Um, Oh, let's see. Oh, I know. I got it. One cheesy poem. Here I go. Tiny white boy here with a poem for your ears. Or is it only for your, for your peers? Are the fears of your peers and, they wrote, and the road they walk down for the community is flawed? Racism lingers on every street. Sexism, a horrid sewage leak. Homophobic actions, sick and overseen. The community is not what it seems. But as a white male that's straight, I do not know of this disgusting hate because I was born lucky. But that, it needs to change. Because white, you're lucky. Black, you're lucky. Hispanic, you're lucky. Asian, you're lucky. Uh, <clears throat> male, you're lucky. Female, you're lucky. Trans, you're lucky. Gay, you're lucky. Straight, you're lucky. Lesbian, you're lucky. Bye, you're lucky. Attack helicopter or check back on that. But you're you, and that's why you're lucky. If anybody tells you otherwise, you be you, and you decide. <sighs> okay, either way, I'm done it out. Because that's my final poem, and this is my final shout! Hello, my name is Solomon Gould. The poem I will be performing is I Just Want to Go Home by Solomon Gould. It's a poem about what it's like to be encouraged to do community service. It's in the original category. We raise our voice through charge or choice. The sound flows through the air. Each hand in a hand. Do a love or a demand. Be kind. Do right and share. And smiling at all. Even if we want to crawl into our bed and sigh. Lest our parents snap. Oh, be a chap. Your joy should touch the sky. They talk quite snooty. Tis your duty to help the community every day. And you will be praising your fine upraising when you are old and gray. Together we shall sing as we feel boredom's sting about love and good and peace. And on we drone. Kindness we condone, oh, shall it ever cease? We'll do what we can do. We'll always follow through. We'll help our great community. And I won't admit I want to quit. I'd leave at the first opportunity. I yearn to leave, but I must grieve, for that won't be my fate. For although I am bored, it's as if I am moored. I must wait and wait. My parents drone about loyalty shown by everyone in town. And like the rest, I'll do my best. And I will never frown. To my parents, service seems like a statue which brightly gleams. And it comes from a sacred tome. But if it was up to me, there's no good I see. I just want to go home. Hello, my name is Armani Jordan, and the title of my poem is A Sunflower's View. 
My poem was about the violence in the community, but it's put through a sunflower's point of view to make it less darkening. To you, a sunflower is just another beautiful attraction in the distance. However, the sunflower sees us as a thing who doesn't care about anything outside of itself. It sees us as an alien race of monsters who come to kill everything in the path we see because we don't care. We pick and kill the flower for our own purpose and pleasure as its life is meaningless. We even pretend to care about the flower by putting it in a vase of water to extend the torture because we just don't care. The flower was supposed to reproduce amongst itself as we reproduce amongst each other. However, the sunflower sees us as a toy and we see the sunflower as a toy to break that makes more toys for us to break as this life is meaning to continue the cycle of our enjoyment and destruction. Did you think that it, oh my God, I forgot. Oh man. Did, it not, did it not occur to you that the sunflower may feel pain or that it had something to live for? Think about everything I've said, but now it's happening to you. Um, yeah, bye. Thank you. I'm Marae King, and my poem is called Imperfect Community. I am multiracial. You can see my mixed skin, my mixed hair, mixed cultures within. But no, the communities don't pull me apart. They push me away, and that's where it starts. <coughs> No, you're not black. No, you're not Hispanic. Trying to make my brain go into a panic. I am a person of color with no place to fit in. There's no community where I truly win. They tell me I act like this. They tell me I dress like that. They tell me I talk like this. They tell me I look like that. Then tell me how I can be accepted, how my looks and personality can be perfected. But don't tell me you're not black. Don't tell me what I lack. Tell me who I should be, I'm breaking down, is it that hard to see? An identity crisis, a mind full of bubbling suds, an ocean of communities that creates a flood, an overload of overwhelming thoughts bouncing across my mind like gunshots. I am a person, not this nor that, so don't label me like a test rat. Let's build the community that I want to see, where you can be you and I can be me. Thank you. My name is Paranika Shrestha and my poem is called Counting Down. It's 12 past 11 and I'm in TikTok heaven. My mom opens the door, please, just 10 minutes more. I slept like nine hours past my bedtime and I internally scream as the default alarm chimes. Wake up, go to school, your grades are your jewels. Seven hours of pure torture. I just wanna go back to playing the recorder. My grades are going down in my period six class, so I have to laugh at all the teacher's jokes, even though they truly are trash. Now, in the nightmare we call the cafeteria, I think I've said hi to about five different Sophias. The last block rolls around, and I've had about four mental breakdowns. The teacher threatens to call my mom, but then we hear my Lord and Savior over the intercom. Come home, three hours of work ahead. Or should I catch up on sleep instead? I procrastinate and text all two of my friends. But the conversations, they start to blend. And now, finally, I have one thing left to spew. Look out, I think Moto Moto likes you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sudish and uh, the name of my poem is Community is with You and Me. Every day we come back home, we know that we're not alone. We've got so much to look forward to, like social media on our phone, which keeps us secure from insecurity, but doesn't help our community. This disease spreads like a plague while none of us can find an immunity. Now it's hard to admit these facts, but they're created by many acts, like trees and packs and relics and artifacts. Whenever you have a question, is it safe to ask the people around you, the people in your schools, the people who surround you? They were made to support you, to help you when you need it, to help when there's a light, but you just can't see it. Our community has been killed by the army of Insta and Snapchat and TikTok, and I'm puzzled like Enigma. 
We are the only ones who can do anything to fix this. You could set aside your phone and overcome if you miss it. Try to engage with your community, with the people around you, and form a unity. Even though we do most things on phones and computers, we have to accept that social media is an intruder. Maybe for a day can you imagine? A day without distractions. A day of no rule breaking. A day of no harmful actions. A day where we spend the most time with the people who surround us. Not just our friends and our families, but our doctors and even the people with anomalies. I repeat myself for the last time. Community is important in the winter and the summertime. Imagine a place with people who don't interact with those who surround them. Seeing this place will truly be astounding. Sadly, this is what our community may become, but hopefully we can fix this and stop being numb. Numb to the feelings of being disengaged and isolated and torn apart and feeling far away. But if everybody in our community makes an effort to help us, no one in our community will ever feel helpless. Thank you. All right, let's hear it for the original category. Another excellent round of deliveries. So we're going to have one more um, serious, serious uh, presenter before we end. Um, and also, I, I think we all have one question, and that's who is Pari's sixth period teacher? Hmm. I'm going to look into that. Boy, I, I'm gl I know it's not me, thank goodness. Woo! All right. Uh, so one more presenter. Stay tuned. My name is Amari Robinson, and I will be performing Rock and Roll Band by Shel Silverstein. If we were a rock and roll band, we'd travel all over the land. We'd play and we'd sing and we're spangling things if we were a rock and roll band. If we were a rock and roll band, we'd be up there on the stand. The people would hear us and love us and cheer us. Hooray for that rock and roll band. If we were a rock and roll band, we'd have millions of fans. We'd travel, we'd play, and we'd sing if we were a rock and roll band. But we ain't no rock and roll band. We're just seven kids in the sand with homemade guitars, pails and jars, made out of potato chip cans. Just seven kids in the sand, playing and singing and dreaming. Oh, wouldn't it be great if we were a rock and roll band? Thank you. OK, let's hear it for all the presenters. They were all excellent. Everyone did a great job. And we're going to be hearing, the judges going to be telling their scores. We're going to be hearing who wins either at the end of the day or perhaps on Wake Up Tacoma tomorrow. Please make sure you go to the finals at the Dramatic Arts. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have, I'm sure, lots of different presenters besides just the winners here. Um, so it should be a good night. So make sure you come on out to that. See ya. <laughs>